Advanced Cube Construction, a guide to design theory and upgrade strategy for cube. When you first start building cubes, the focus is on individual cards and individual colors. People usually start out by putting a bunch of cards that they own in a box and hoping for the best. That's a fine way to start out, but where do we go from there? This video will cover advanced concepts of designing and upgrading your cube. Please note, this video is on the advanced level and is therefore meant for people who are already familiar with Cube and likely have a basic Cube of their own. If you have not yet seen the introductory level videos about Cube and about building your first Cube, you may do so here and here. The next level of progression is to become a Magic the Gathering designer. Congratulations, you're hired. Now let's start thinking like an R&D designer. Two color decks. When you started your cube journey, cube was likely just about individual cards and individual colors. Your initial approach to your list may have been put together using broad brush strokes. Blue is the control color. Red is the aggro color. Green is the ramp color. A great way to improve your cube is to start thinking about two color combinations. What do you want the two color combinations in your cube to do? Assuming you decide to build a typical cube where the cards are split evenly between all five colors, then the majority of the time your drafters will end up picking cards from two colors. For example, you might decide that because you like the evolve and graft mechanics, Simic decks from your cube should be based around plus one plus one counters. For Golgari, perhaps you decide to go for cards that cause shenanigans in the graveyard, and perhaps Selesnia is where you decide to have a token-based strategy. Take a look at what your decks would do in two-color combinations, and then work to make these deck options fun and playable, while keeping in mind to keep your cube balanced. One of the best ways to visualize this is to lay out the cards in each two color combination as a curve to give you a rough idea of what that deck for the two color combination may look like. If Rakdos is supposed to be aggro, but it has six one drops and 47 two drops, then something needs to be done about that. If you are using CubeTutor.com, and quite frankly you should be using CubeTutor.com, just click on the View Curve option for your cube. By including cards like Life from the Loam and Intangible Virtue, you are giving your drafters a very clear direction on what they can expect from your cube, even when drafting it for the first time. But you need to be careful not to include too many cards like this, which only really fit into one strategy. Invariably, the best cards for our cube are those which could slot into multiple of our guild decks. Deadbridge Goliath, Den Protector, Forgotten Harvest, these could slot into either the plus one plus one counter Simic deck or the Golgari Graveyard Shenanigans deck. Acorn Harvest, Bearscape, Grizzly Fate, Kessig Cage Breakers are all examples of cards that leverage the graveyard but also produce tokens. Avenger of Zendikar, Hunting Triad, Spike Breeder could all go into either a tokens or a plus one plus one counters deck. Seki, Season's Guide, Mykoloth, the Holy Grail. Well, maybe. These could potentially go into a graveyard, tokens, or plus one plus one counters deck. By taking this approach, we can determine that invariably the best cards for our cubes are those which fit into multiple decks based on our own definition of what those decks are. Now you can always take this one step further and go for tri-color, although things can get very complicated at that point. If you do want to go as far as tri-color, you'll need to spend a lot of time on design, and your cube will need to contain a lot of mana fixing. Looking at the Alara and Tarkir blocks would be a good place to start if this is what you'd like to do. Upgrades. One of the most difficult questions to answer when building your cube is, which cards should I cut? Now, difficult as it may be, cutting and then, of course, upgrading those cards can also be one of the most appealing aspects of being a cube builder. Making anything better taps into the reward center of our brain. Improving things feels good. And with cube, there is constant room for improvement. 
Now, one option you might hear is don't cut anything. Some cube designers choose to let their cube grow with each new set. It's a nice idea to maintain an ever-growing shrine of the best cards ever printed, but in practice, this becomes almost impossible to balance from a drafting perspective, and I do not recommend it. For almost all of us, cuts will have to be made, and these are the best ways to determine what needs to be cut and upgraded. First, cut the the narrowest cards, those which will only fit into one of our two color decks, perhaps. Second, cut the cards that are underperforming. Those are the cards which you will always see as the 13th or 15th pick in your drafts. Remember, this is cube, no jank, no dirt, no duds. Again, if you are using Cube Tutor, check out the draft charts on your analysis page to see which cards are underperforming. Finally, cut and upgrade any cards with a similar mana cost that do not have as much flexibility. These are oftentimes the easiest upgrades. For example, Savannah Lion gets cut and upgraded into Dragon Hunter. In reality, cut decisions are normally made with a bit of each of these factors in mind. Final thoughts? Always remember that this is your cube. Don't worry about conforming to what other people think a cube is. If Beast Tribal is a rubbish deck, but you and your group love it, then keep it and enjoy drafting it. Many builders have cards in their cubes which are basically only there for sentimental value, and that's cool too. A cube should be a reflection of you and your group. Have a great time building it and have a great time drafting it. I hope this video has been of some help to you. This video was developed in coordination with CubeTutor.com. Very special thanks to Ben Titmarsh for his expert assistance with the research, writing, and outlining of this lesson. 